Hi, my name is Greg Woodward, and I'm the servo motor department manager here at ACT. And I just wanted to spend a couple minutes talking to you about what we do uh, when the servo motors come in, how we uh, diagnose uh, repairs, and uh, some of the steps that we take to uh, uh, to repair them and uh, diagnose the problems with them. Um, what we have here is a FANUC motor that's in uh, uh, various stages of uh, disassembly. And one of the things that I wanted to talk about quickly was the brake assembly because this seems to be a common uh, problem with FANUCs. Uh, what happens is the uh, brake assembly gets saturated with uh, grease and as a result the brake assembly will, uh, won't work anymore and it causes collision faults. And what we have here is the various parts of the brake assembly. These are the discs here. Um, which we will <coughs> clean of grease and uh, brush up. And this is really the, uh, the part that uh, suffers the most from uh, grease contamination. This is the brake disc assembly itself. And it can become saturated with, uh, with oil and grease. And when that happens, there's really no way to repair it. It has to be replaced. So what we'll do is we'll uh, remove this one and we'll replace it with a brand new pad and uh, that will uh, help take care of the, uh, uh, the brake torque uh, issues that we're seeing with these motors. And then some of the other things I wanted to show. Here is a, uh, a motor that we're getting ready to uh, do a PDMA test on. Uh, what the PDMA test does is it uh, verifies that the uh, winding condition is up to factory specifications. It'll show us if uh, there's any damage to the winding insulation uh, or any shorts. So what we'll do is uh, hook it up to this uh, equipment here, and then we'll go ahead and enter the parameters for the motor, and we'll run a test on it, and it'll run through the various tests, <coughs> and it will uh, it will surge the windings, and it will uh, verify that the insulation is is intact and that uh, the motor windings are uh, up to specifications. Here we have the. Mitchell equipment, which is part of our diagnostic diagnostic testing equipment. Uh, Mitchell equipment uh, allows us to test the motors, uh, run them, and uh, verify that the feedback devices are operating properly without having to invest in a lot of uh, drives for different motors. It's a very versatile piece of equipment, and uh, we're constantly updating it, upgrading it, so that we can uh, use it on various different manufacturers' motors, like the Spanic motor that we have here. <clears throat> One of the first things that we'll do when we're testing the, the Mitchell equipment is we'll hook up the encoder, and then we'll do what we call a count test, which is probably the most important test that we do on the feedback devices because it verifies that the feedback device is actually counting properly, uh, which is integral to uh, making sure that the motor uh, operates and uh, rotates properly. So we'll turn the shaft of the motor, difference between the two, and whether or not the encoder is operating properly. A few times, now, there are various other tests that we do with the motors, and, such as um, a continuous count tests where we rotate the encoder and continue to uh, check the encoder to make sure that it's counting properly. We also do a phase test uh, for incremental encoders uh, to make sure that the A and B pulses are synced properly and uh, most importantly, we'll make sure that the motors are aligned properly using the PI-5000. Uh, every manufacturer has a different alignment position, and it's, uh, it's important to make sure that uh, the motors are set up to factory specs uh, when they leave here. Uh, I can also use the, uh, the TI-3000 to actually run the motor, and we'll do that real quick. Uh, the TI-3000 will allow us to run the motors without actually having to have a, a FANUC drive in place. As you can see, when we finish repairing the motor, uh, we'll align the encoder and then we will actually do a test run of the motor to make sure that's operating properly. So as you can see, the, the shaft on the FANUC motor is, uh, is turning. And we'll rotate it at uh, factory specs and then we'll, we'll also do a uh, torque test on it to make sure that the uh, motor magnets are up to the proper strength. And the way we do that is we'll rotate the motor uh, much in the same fashion. We'll actually uh, attack, attach a torque wrench to it 
such as uh, one that we have here, and compare the reading that we get from the torque wrench with the nameplate data or data that we have on hand, and then that way we know that uh, the motor is uh, up to proper torque and that it will, uh, it will operate properly in the factory.